My name is Robin D.G. Kelly. I am a professor of history at UCLA, and I have been named one of the Freedom Scholars for 2022. I came into the profession at the height of a battleground over history, you know, in the 1980s, uh, the whole war on political correctness, which was a battle over history. And it's interesting that the difference between, say, then and now is that um, it seems that the attacks on the interpretation of the past, uh, that the right has far more political weapons, that they are actually engaged in a kind of a McCarthyite attack on school teachers, on students, on families, passing legislation that criminalize teaching what it's called critical race theory, but really teaching any kind of revisionist or I should say multicultural history. And to me, it's fascinating because much of what's being attacked is very specific. It's not even a, a, an attack on a class critique of the United States. It's an attack about race and gender and sexuality. There's a movement afoot to eliminate any education that actually reckons with the history of slavery, with indigenous dispossession, with sexism and patriarchy to eliminate any discussion around gender and gender identity, especially as you have this kind of emergence of much more openly queer and transgender culture. These are dangerous times, and yet they're so familiar to me. You know, it's like I've, I've been here before. This anti-wokeness tendency mirrors what happened with the attacks on political correctness. Because I mean, it literally is the same thing. So you have a situation where there's an attempt to expand the curriculum, expand the canon, deal with more writers of color, for example, uh, deal with issues that are not necessarily mainstream American, that in fact are critical of the United States. And the response is that's political correctness. We have to counter it. And it came not just from the right. In fact, it came from the liberals. It came from the left. Uh, it came from, you know, communities where they're saying, you know, we're not paying enough attention to class, you know, classic liberal fatigue, like, you know, we already gave you some money, we already gave you this legislation, like, what else do you want to ask for, you know, why are you criticizing us? I happen to sit at UCLA, I hold the Gary B. Nash chair. Gary Nash was one of the leaders in the 1990s around creating a, a kind of history standards. And that history standards was attacked by the right. Liz Cheney very famously attacked Gary Nash. The grassroots movement coming from the right of ostensibly parents concerning about their kids reading Toni Morrison, right? <laughs> or, or reading books about slavery or civil rights or LGBTQ struggles for justice, that those are the same ones who give the impression of being grassroots, community-based, and I'm sure there's some of that, but they also get all this funding from right-wing think tanks, from dark money. That's how they're able to have such a huge platform and to really disrupt efforts to really transform our education. I'm so shocked by the award, and I, 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 I suffer from imposter syndrome, so I'm like, I'm not even sure I deserved it. But you know, I'll take it. I think it's a great idea. When you look at the the scholars who've received this award, a lot of them are actually younger scholars, unlike me. They have brilliant ideas that don't normally get funded, whether it's dealing with the prison industrial complex or dealing with the law. And so I'm really proud to be part of this kind of this cohort. There's so many young scholars out there, and I'm also trying to do the same thing, writing about movements we've never heard of without having to worry or be concerned about numbers, size, but rather impact. We're beginning to break through the kind of narrative of civil rights begets black power, begets radical feminism and these kinds of categories. But instead, the movements like the Third World Women's Alliance and the Boggs Center. Of course, we have a lot more in the Kumbahi River Collective, which is a group of women of color based in, in Boston. Uh, and then more recently, I think people are recognizing that there is a history, especially an abolitionist history, that can be traced to the 1970s, but really takes off in the 90s. And over the last two decades, we've seen so many amazing movements whose history is being written as we speak. And so I think some of the new scholarship 
um, is really getting at these questions, thinking transnationally, thinking globally, and moving away from a focus on mostly male leadership and thinkers to produce a different vision of the future.